All right, welcome to the, one of the first 3-1 release videos. I've, I've been falling short of creating these videos. Uh, everyone's you know, told us they're super important, so I need to get back on track. But we just released 3-1 yesterday. One of the big features in there is a REST data server, and I'm, we're really excited about this feature. Uh, I think it's just going to kind of flip the product a little bit. It's going to twist kind of how you think about HiByte, and I'll explain kind of how the feature works. I'll demo that. I'll walk you through some basic configuration and then you know most importantly kind of show you where that feature where we're taking this feature so to start what we added is a rest data server to the products so we always had it we already had a rest interface for configuration that's what the the ux is using to configure the product but now we have a rest server kind of embedded think of a global scope to, to read data and it's really useful in the concept of uns to do things that are transactional right that aren't report by exception like mqtt uh, and I'll, I'll explain that in more detail. So to start, I've got a basic project set up that's modeled some pump data coming out of an OPC server. So I've got this pump one in here. You know, I've, I've got an OPC input, and I won't walk through the setup of all that. But when I test read it, you can see uh, the data coming through. And I have a flow uh, that's simply sending that out to MQTT. And I think I actually have a bug. There we go. Let me remove that. And if I pull up MQTT uh, and subscribe, my client looks like it is hosed. So let me let me launch that again. When I pull this up, this is the base of the UNS. So we're we're publishing over a Portland R and D pumps namespace. And when we connect, and I'm using the Hybrid broker. But either way, you can see that data is coming through, and that flow is just publishing it once every second, and we can see some data change. So that's cool. We've done all that. You know, that's publishing model data to the UNS. Done. Uh, so what do we want to do now? Now we want to, to bring in a REST client and read the current state of that asset. So not report by exception, but come in and actually do a read. So to do that, you go to Settings. And similar to here, where we have the MQTT broker. We now have a REST data server. And I'm going to turn this on. And the first thing I'm going to do is allow anonymous access. So when I do this, it requires no authentication. You know, this isn't advised in production. You should secure this, but I'm just going to allow an anonymous user. But it is going to limit the user to read-only access, which I'll, I'll explain. You can only really get data. You can't do writes. So with this on, the other really cool thing is we. this is all self-documented. So if you hit this link, it's going to launch a Swagger UI. Uh, and this is all self-hosted, so I can do this from any machine, and I can actually test the API here. I could also pull up Postmon or Curl or whatever and, and do tests in there, but there's just a really easy way to try this out. So I'm going to come in. One of the first endpoints is just a get connections endpoint. We have a similar config endpoint that does this, but this in the REST data server just lets me see what connections are in there. And you'll see from here, if I execute that, here's the curl command, here's the REST API. And you can see two connections came back, MQTT and OPC, and those represent these two here. Now I could go out to here, you know, Postmon, for example, and do a get request and get the same data back. So this is, you know, that query is more metadata to kind of see, okay, what's in the server. I can also query for the inputs off one of those connections, but really I'm interested in data. So with the anonymous, I can do a login that I had said earlier. I can do any of the get requests. So let me do one here. So I'm going to type in the name of the connection and then the name of the input. So that would be this name. And hit execute. And what's going to come back is the same JSON that's being published uh, over UNS minus the metadata uh, comes back over the API, right? So I have pressure speed, et cetera. And it's issued on demand, right? So that's pretty cool. I can also read the instances, right? So I've modeled, I've taken that raw input data and I've actually modeled it through an instance in HiByte, this instance. This is actually what I'm publishing out over MQTT. So I can come down to the instances API. I could list all the instances, I get the details, but again, I'm just gonna use the instances API. I think it's pump one, execute. And I've got the data. So any instance, any input in HiByte, you can query over this REST API. 
I'm doing it with OPC data, you know, direct to OPC or through an instance. It probably makes more sense to do like a SQL query or something that's more transactional. But anything, whether it's Pi, OPC, any connection that we have, now you have an interface, REST interface on top of that that allows you to read the data out in a JSON format. So you don't need to know the complexity of the protocol or whatever. You can get the data just like you would over MQTT JSON, but you can get it over transactionally in a REST interface. Pretty, pretty cool, right? And, and when I say, when I said earlier, it's really flipping maybe your concept of high because before, you know, we would gather data, condition that, model that, push it to a system. Now you can actually pull the data from us uh, using your own client, right? So it kind of switches the paradigm. You can do either or. Uh, so let's take this a little farther. So I'm actually going to secure the API now because I want to do a write. And in this case, I'm actually going to write out to uh, the underlying data source. So I'm going to issue a write that's going to go out over OPC, and I'm going to issue that through REST. So to do that, uh, I'll leave anonymous access on for now. You should probably you, you should turn that off in production uh, and turn on HTTPS. But for now, what I'm going to do is to, to do a write, I need an API token. So I'm going to copy that out. This is a one-time grab, so you got to copy this and save it somewhere. And I've got my token there, and I'm going to secure it. So I'm going to go back to this API. Uh, and I'm, in here, I'm going to put the authorization token up here. And I'll show, I'll show you how to do this in uh, Postmon, too, so you can kind of see what the query looks like. Now, in Highbyte for OPC, if I want to write out to OPC, I need an output. So I've already created one. So you can see my input is targeting pump one, that identifier in the OPC server. If I pulled up Kepware, that's this one. So I'm going to create an output that targets the same thing. And I think I'm going to set it to auto-discover the... Um, so it's going, to, it's going to look at this branch and then issue a write. It's going to take the JSON and translate it into OPC. Uh, but I, I need the output. So then I'm going to jump back out here. And we see a part of the outputs API. So I can list those, but I already know the one that I want. And this is how I'm going to issue the write. So I'm going to, to try this out. It's the connection OPC. Uh, one second. I'm just going to save out my token because we're going to want to use that in a second. Uh, and I just want the output name. So I called it called it pump one. And here's just the JSON that I want to write. So if I went to the read on the input, which I had already done, right, and I execute this, so this is the JSON I'm reading. Let's say I go, let me clear this out. Let's see the request. I'm going to go down to the right. Um, down here. And I have to issue the body. So I could write out everything, but in this case, I just want to control the state. So I'm going to turn the state from uh, false to true. And to verify this, I'm going to go back out. The report by exception stuff, you can see the state is driven by through the instance. That state is mapped to the on attribute, and that's false. I'm going to set it to true. So I'm going to execute this. And this is going to come back and say, you know, success 200. So it went through it, found this tag in the OPC server, and flipped it to true. And then if we go back to the report by exception, you can see we switch that, that bit. Now we could write to anything in here that's, that's writable. Uh, we can't, you can't write through the instance. So there's no, there's no API right now to write to the instance. We're thinking about that. You know, in this kind of simple case where an instance is just OPC tags, it would be cool to be able to write to the instance on and know that that translates to this OPC tag. We're not quite set up to do that. It's a little more complex than that, especially if you start mixing data from different sources in here, doing um, any kind of expression where you're manipulating the data. To do the reverse of that is not you know, trivial. So we're kind of thinking through that. But right now, you have to write to the raw, the raw outputs is how it works. Uh, so that, and that's pretty much it, right? The ability to read and write to any, you, you can read from any input, any instance, and you can write to any output in JSON format over REST. Uh, just to actually to finish that one out, if I go to um, Postmon, let's just show how to do that in Postmon real quick. So here was my write. So we're going to copy the URL into Postmon. Uh, and then you need an authorization header. So the syntax looks like this. And then what I do is I copy the 
the API key for the right, and then the body uh, would look the same in JSON format. So we'll turn it, let's turn it back off. And you'll see it's on right now. Uh, we're going to send that. That's going to come through 200. And you'll see it went back to off. So we, I just, same thing, but instead of using the Swagger API, I just wrote through. And you can use curl. You can use any kind of REST client uh, to manipulate this data. So now you have this nice, clean REST API that hides, the, obfuscates, you know, the complexity of the underlying protocol and brings the data back in JSON, similar to what you'd see in the UNS. One more... Uh, one more piece about this in terms of security. So in here right now, the, this token is a global token. So once you have access to this, you can read and write uh, to any, you can read from any input, any instance, and you can write to any output. And we have future plans to lock this down and tie it into our user management. So you would create a user that has access to certain parts of the product uh, and would give, be given a token. So then you can start to restrict, you know, you still, we still have this global option if you wanted to use it, but you'd be able to restrict what parts of the, the product uh, they have access to. The last thing I'll say about this, kind of where we're headed, uh, really cool functionality, right? If you want to drive transactions, um, actually, one, let's let's do one more piece that I didn't show. Let's say that um, you can parameterize inputs and use it through this too, right? So let, I'm just going to turn this flow off for right now because I'm going to go mess with the underlying input. But let's say that right now we're reading pump one, and let's say there's three pumps here. So I want to parameterize this input, which that's a, if you've never seen this, you can pass parameters to inputs, you know, the pump ID. And if I test this, this is going to fail because it doesn't know what to replace this with right now. But through the Swagger API, assuming I have permissions to the post route, I can also post the parameter value. So this is going to do a read. Uh, let me try it out. OPC. I want to use the input name which in this case is, I'm actually going to change it just to pump, oops, right, and in here I can pass the parameters. So I'm going to, this is just key value pairs, so the pump ID, let's say, is 1, uh, and I'll execute that. And what this is going to do is it goes in and does the read, and that pump ID gets replaced, right? And that's the that's the address into the OPC server. So now what's going to come back is pump one. Likewise, if I come out and run the same query, and I increment to pump two, now pump two comes back, right, with a different asset ID. So this is an ability to go in and take up whether it's a SQL query, OPC query, PI query, etc. I can parameterize that query and then drive the parameters from the REST API. So I can limit the number of inputs or outputs I create um, in the product, right? And then I can control which one I'm actually targeting via uh, the client side, right? So the, our templating stuff and parameterization works through this API as well. It's pretty cool. Uh, let me, so one more thing on kind of where we're taking this and let me just fix this back up and turn the flow back on. And this is really in the concept of UNS. So, so one thing you'll notice is that in here, when this data starts flowing, you know, this is on Portland R&D pumps, and this is all my, my pump data. And I would probably extend this. I'd probably go in, you know, production uh, to this flow and parameterize the output to be like uh, this dot asset ID. So I'm going to take that piece of information from the payload, and I'm going to put it oops, mean to write. I'm going to put it in the topic. So you'll just see that, you know, the pump ID comes out here. Uh, and actually to make that a little cleaner, I'll probably just, oops, I'll probably just put pump in front of it. So I'm starting to build the UNS, right, the namespace part, and then the model data comes in, which is cool. So you can kind of see this address, right, in MQTT. But now, you know, the address that I'm actually going to read this out of over uh, the REST API is different. When I say different, uh, let's see. Just to give an example, it looks like it looks like this. Let me copy it out of this tool. So if I can put this side by side real quick to just kind of give this example, um, 
you know, my UNS namespace is really this, and then the API namespace, I just upgraded to Windows 11 and I don't, I don't love it, uh, <laughs> is, is this, right, this data. So really, this address over the REST API is kind of our internal namespace, you know, V1 connections, the name of the connection, inputs, etc. versus this is really your UNS. So they're, they're disconnected, right? Ultimately, probably like in 3.3 later this year, what we want to do is start to bring these together. And what we're missing in the product is the concept, what we're thinking about it is the concept of views, which is the ability to kind of build out a namespace and then land instances like pump one or inputs, et cetera, under that namespace to visually do that in the product. And then over MQTT, you can point to a piece of that namespace and say, send this all out over MQTT, or we'd enhance the REST API that you could look into that namespace and do a read with the end result being that the topic namespace that shows up here, you can basically copy that into uh, the query itself. So the topic and the rest query look the same, right? It's a, it's a unified namespace. So whether I want to get the report by exception data or I want to come in through a rest client and get the current state of the asset, it's the same namespace, it's the same address. So to kind of unify those over time. Um, but this is kind of our first pass in the REST API. Super powerful feature. Uh, try it out. Really cool that you can, again, read read instances and inputs uh, right to outputs now. Very clean abstraction layer over the underlying protocols. Tons of possibilities. So give it a try uh, and send us some feedback.